I just bought the cheapest FRS in the nation. For those of you that didn't know, Trav and I were in a heated battle. It was for 10 grand and guess who won? This guy. I cannot wait to surprise him with what I got. And yeah, it's a little rough around the edges. It's basically missing its full entire service history. And it's making a pretty concerning clunk in the front suspension. And since Trav has no clue that I bought this car, let's go show him what I got. Super excited with this purchase. It was cheap, just like your boy. It's got a little character, just like your boy. But overall, I mean, this thing is purring like a kitten. I'm just really enjoying it. It's a really fun little sports car. Got a few hours and then uh, we'll be home. And then my worst nightmare happened. Uh, the check engine light decided to say hello. Oh no. Uh, oh no. It broke down. So I prayed it was just something simple. And well, what else to do than call Trav? <laughs> sick, sick. <laughs> What's going on? Whose who's car is this? This is our car. This is the one that I paid the, you know, 10 grand so I could uh, get us a cheap sports car. You bought me an FRS? I did. Look at that thing. It's a oh, thing of beauty. What are we doing out here? Well, the reason you brought the trailer is because it's not running. How do I talk to you, car? All right, dude, try and start it. Okay, before we go any further, we need to stop and tell you about today's sponsor, Auto Tempest. This is Brad. And before he found autotempest.com, he had a problem. You see, he has a different car for almost every day of the week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I need one for Friday. This is what we call freestyling. <laughs> oh, I smell something. G37, you think that's for sale? That could be for sale. Whoa, there's something here. I can feel it. Hey, get out of here. His love for buying cars has turned into an obsession, but his current tactics aren't getting him any fresh leads. You again? Get out of here before I call the cops. Won't anybody sell me their car? Luckily, there's hope with Auto Tempest. And thanks to them, Brad has found a new way to channel his passion without overwhelming his wallet. See, autotempest.com consolidates car listings from all top sites online, making it easier for Brad to compare prices, find the best deals, and even sort cars based on features and specifications. Even sorting by manual transmissions. Yes! It's like having a personal car buying advisor right at his fingertips. And Auto Tempest is the tool that I use to find the cheapest FRS in the nation. Check this out. For the make, it's a Scion model FRS. Put in your zip code. Now you can search from any distance from 25 miles all the way till anywhere. Click search and I'm looking for the lowest price. So I'll sort by lowest price, but you can do a bunch of other filters as well. And of course, I'm gonna hit that manual transmission button. So all these cars fit the filters and boom, just like that, there's the cheapest one. Now, Brad has a car for every day of the week. And thanks to the new Auto Tempest mobile app available on iOS and Android, it's only a matter of time before he has dedicated weekend cars too. Yeah. If you're like Brad and you love cars, click the link down in the description below and use Auto Tempest to find and buy your next car. Thanks, Auto Tempest. Well, beggars can't be choosers, and I get to push it onto the trailer. Ah, stop using the brakes! <gasps> if you'd like to snag our limited edition tea, go check it out. Save the pistons, baby. Well, guys, in an interesting turn of events, we were actually able to get this thing back on the road. Trav is a miracle worker, except we're now under British horsepower. Guys, I'm telling you, this is incredible! I think your hair in one of the best sports cars for under 10 grand! Which is kind of funny because considering that, well, a Land Rover is one of the least reliable cars ever made, and this Toyota is one of the most, I can't wait to show Trav what we have cooking. It's gonna be fun. Okay, so clearly we're not off to the greatest of starts. And as you can see, Trav has started inspecting it. Yeah, lucky me, dude, this thing's a real piece. Dude, give me my 15 minutes of fame. And hey, you know what? I'm still really excited about this purchase. It's a pretty wild story of how we even got here. And as you know, 
I won 10 grand beating our guy Trav over here in our first ever money shift series in a tight battle. And with that 10K, you have a lot of options for a car to buy and build on the channel. And yeah, the goal was to start with a car that we could build into something the internet has never seen. So I just hopped on the interwebs and the first choice was a pretty obvious one, the 350Z. I mean, what a tuner car hero. The 350Z blends performance, style, and affordability that offers a pure sports car experience with its rear wheel drive, responsive V6 engine, and I mean, who doesn't love the sound of that VQ power? Now, when I looked up what they were going for, eesh. Yeah, as you can see, the lowest priced one in the last five years went for 13.4 with 89,000 miles on it. That's just not gonna work. Next up was the NC Miata. I mean, who doesn't love themselves some topless motoring? It's the definition of a cheap sports car. And it was once the redheaded stepchild of the Miata family, but it's really become popular as of late. And while yes, there are a few under our 10K budget that recently sold, Mianas are just a little vanilla. And so wanted to see what else was out there, which brought me to the E36 M3. I have owned a few of these beauties, including this BEA beautiful Astoral M that I picked up when we started this channel. Man, I gotta tell you guys, I never should have sold that one. It's a proper M car, touted as one of the best handling cars of the 90s, period. And I love it then, I love it now, but I wanted to buy something that I'd never owned before. As you can see, over the last five years, there has been a ton of transactions. Yeah, you can find them for under 10 grand still today, like this one that sold for 9,200 bucks. It's a 95 with the S50, but still, I don't know if I need a fourth one, right? So with nothing rated M on the channel, it brought me to an SN95 Mustang, specifically the SVT Cobra. I mean, these things rip. They sound fast, they look fast, and are a ton of bang for your buck. But hop online and quickly you can see that the ones that are under 10K, unfortunately, are all of the topless flavor, which, yeah, would be cool, but I feel like Mustangs should be coupes. Then Ideal Fam, you knew this was coming. The honorable mentions, baby. We all like the WRX but those are all over the internet. Challengers are cool too, but they're a tad too expensive, which brings us to the BRZ and the FRS. As you guys know, Toyota and Subaru collaborated to create one of the best sports cars ever made at any price point. It's the hard top Miata, fun, it's playful, and begging to be driven hard and put away wet runs. You get design language that hits way above its weight, a little boxer motor that's more playful than a little puppy, and a six-speed manual to choose your flavor of fun. We've always had a soft spot for them. I mean, after we got invited out by Toyota to drive the new GR86, manual Supra, and that GR Corolla, that GR86 stole both of our hearts. So, hopped on the interwebs one more time, and scrolling through the ads, Guys, are you seeing what I'm seeing? I mean, here's a 13 FRS that has 57,000 miles on it, but it has been hit in every corner. You have this one for eight grand, but it has 185,000 miles. This one has a rebuilt title. This one doesn't even have the same colors. As you can see very quickly, a lot of these cars have been hit or What's even worse is they have auto tragic transmissions. Now, not saying it's the worst thing in the world, but having an automatic in a sports car, how do you put it? It's kind of like going out for your birthday, but then just not ordering dessert. So after calling on about 10 cars, believe it or not, to say I was frustrated would be an understatement. But then guys, I found this one for slightly over our 10K budget. So I scheduled an appointment, went to the dealer, and I could tell this thing was edgy and had some problems. But that meant there must have been room for negotiation. And after a quick test drive and without Trav's permission, I was able to knock a few grand off the asking price and get it for 9,500 buck. So the moment you've all been waiting for, what the hell does a $9,500 clean title, no accident history, FRS, look like? Not great. Well, let's hit the lights. That was cool. Now guys, don't worry. We're going to do a full inspection in the next video because Trav's been working on cars forever and he's going to tell me everything that's wrong with this thing. But I want to go through a few things before we get to that video and just show you the stuff that I've found wrong, which was actually quite a bit and quite amusing. Let's start with one of the few positives. These tires are actually relatively new and spin pretty well, although there is some curbage right here that then bleeds into this front bumper that pretty much goes all the way around. Again, you're gonna see people parked by feel, but whew, yikes. 
Underneath, I really don't know what I'm looking at, but there was definitely something up here that was super metallic-y. This looks pretty normal, except when you get back here, it looks like it's missing something. I mean, that definitely doesn't look like you should be able to stick your head into where your exhaust system should be. So that's missing, I think. It was probably stolen. Coming around the side here, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but oh man, that looks like a mountain range on the side of it. That looks like a shopping cart went in full speed and just sent it into the side of this door. That's all I can really see from my eye height. Now we're gonna lower it real quick and I'm gonna show you from bird's eye view. So this little insert here looks like it sat in the sun longer than any beach bum and it looks like it's starting to develop a little melanoma. And then when you come over to the hood here, this thing sat under a tree for a very long time. And then on top of that, you got these marks that I thought at first was just bird shit, but it's actually uh, in the paint and you can hear it. Need some love. Coming over here, you got little dents, obviously. I don't know, we gotta do something with these. This side's even worse than the other side. This door is actually okay, but then again, you can see that there are a couple of little mountain ranges right there, but they're tiny. I mean, they, they're not a big deal. Coming over here, I think this is a cigarette butt stain. You crack this open and the bolster has been worn and there was some white stuff on this seat that we couldn't get out as much as we tried. So. I don't know what it was. The interior overall is in pretty good condition, except it has really small seats that I don't know how I'm gonna sit in. The shift knob is pretty worn. I think this guy liked to downshift because it's really worn on this side. Also, this parking brake has the same issue, but the steering wheel, it's in great condition. Coming around the back, it has been bumped once or thrice, but overall, rear bumper is actually in pretty good condition. Tail lights, I think, work. This gas cap has this weird design on it. I don't know if you can pick it up, but it actually has like a dancing man. It's almost like a worm hung out on it. Then at some point, decided to leave. Over here, it was pretty solid. I mean, I don't know if it ever got used because this guy was probably single his whole life. Yeah, like I said, there was definitely some sounds coming from in here, which could be a pretty big problem. It could be the brakes, it could be the suspension. I mean, it could just be me too. You don't know. And guys, popping the hood, well, it's an engine to me. I mean, I don't really know what I'm looking at. And I barely inspected it at the dealership, which, you know, obviously is kind of uh, probably not the best thing considering that it already kind of broke down. But now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Why this car was trailered here and why Trav saved my life. And that is because it stopped running. So I think we should end this video with seeing if it will start. Trav, do you think, do you think this thing could run? I mean, not, not, it's not gonna run right now. Well, could you just give it a go? Try harder. Once it does run, what do you, what do you think of this thing? I mean, dude, it's kind of a piece of shit. Hey, 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 guys, guys. Now, let's end this on a high note. If you won 10,000 bucks, what car would you have bought? Would you have bought an FRS, a BRZ, or WRX, or SN95 Cobra, or something else that we mentioned? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the vid, like, subscribe, and also, uh, we have a ton more content coming your way with this FRS, so if you love FRSs, definitely subscribe. I'm super stoked. I'm glad that you guys are all here. Check out our other videos up here. We do have an inspection video coming very soon, which telling by Trav's face uh, is not gonna turn out very good for me. Thanks for watching and promise me one thing, keep living the I do lifestyle. And remember, use Auto Tempest to find your next ideal car.